Welcome everyone to worship. This is Kaiserslautern Evangelical Lutheran Church in Germany, and we have a lot that's going on, and uh, I want to tell you about that today. First of all, we are now in the Trinity season, which means that we've gone from red and white on Trinity Sunday last week to green, and this is the season of Christian growth, and we'll be in this season for a long time. Uh, second, I want to announce, and I'll remind you this at the end of the service, that we are excited that we are going to be worshiping in person next Sunday. Please keep track of the KELC website for updates and uh, interaction with the congregation, and we will let you know the time on Saturday that we will worship, and then we will worship at 8.30 a.m. as usual on Sunday morning, next Sunday. The thing is, is that uh, we're going to have to divide the congregation so that we have the right numbers. So please be uh, connected to the KELC webpage uh, so that uh, you'll know about sign up and about the number of people that we can have in the building. Um, and then if you can't be with us for service, uh, also re uh, realize that we will still be streaming the service in the weeks ahead so that those who are unable to make it because of uh, travel or because of the, num the number situation, you'll be able to worship with us by stream and video archive. Another thing that you need to know is that this past week I had eye surgery. And with the cataract surgery, everything went well, and I'm able to see, but I'm not supposed to be reading anything. So today, I'm very glad to say that we have uh, an elder, Richard Brown, who will deliver uh, the sermon. Uh, I wrote the sermon, and he's delivering it. And then also another um, lay leader of our congregation, Ben Bannock, also on the council. And he will be doing the liturgy in today's worship service. Um, and let's see, is there anything else? And then um, uh, I think that's all. So as, uh, as we begin, as always, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn today is going to be All Glory Be to God Alone, hymn 948.
If you're following along with us in your hymnal, we're going to be doing the Order of Matins on page 219.
Amen. We continue with the readings. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Pentecost is from Exodus chapter 19. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came to the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called out to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all of these words that the Lord had commanded him. And the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle, wrote, the epistle reading is from Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have not been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him? from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because of all sin, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin was not yet counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sin was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the ninth, chap ninth and tenth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went throughout all cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons, you receive without paying, give without pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We continue on page 221 with the responsory. Forever, O Lord.
praying in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The sermon hymn for today is going to be hymn 908, Lord, open now my heart to hear. unto you from the Lord our Father and, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Twice in today's Gospel reading, the Kingdom of Heaven is featured by the Apostle Matthew as he helps us understand Jesus' earthly ministry. The first reference to the Kingdom is in verse 35, where the disciple Matthew tells us, Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. So to understand our Lord's work on earth, a person has to appreciate this significant fact, that Christ was constantly attending to the sick, the sufferers of disease, and the physically disabled. While a person's spiritual life with God was of decisive importance to our Savior, from the record of Scripture, we know that our Lord Jesus healed everyone who approached him for mercy and help. If you could go back to Israel 2,000 years ago and observe and follow Jesus around, one of the things you would notice is that everywhere Christ went became like the setting of a hospital emergency room. Sick people, injured people, people with long enduring maladies crowded in and begged the Savior to heal every imaginable infirmity. God's Word reveals that Jesus provided miraculous help for the deaf, the blind, lepers, those with internal bleeding, as the woman in Luke 8, the paralyzed, those with fever, as in Luke 4, for Peter's mother-in-law, those with withered, atrophied limbs, those with internal and external edema or swelling, and Christ also healed the high priest's servant's ear after Peter cut it off in Gethsemane on the night our Lord was betrayed. While saving sinners was his primary mission, the Son of God also came to restore all of creation and our lives back to the way it was before sin ruined everything. 
In love for our rebellious and corrupted world, Jesus took time to heal broken and sick bodies, in part to bring the world back to the way it was before. Perfect, holy, blessed, and pristine. Motivated by love, Jesus saw the suffering, had compassion on everyone, and healed those in need. Again, Matthew writes that Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. And this truth is instructive for us today. If you are ill or in physical pain, or if you struggle with some physical or psychological disability, know that Jesus is not changed in his compassion for all of us who suffer the challenges associated with this fallen and pain-filled world. Christ is near to all who call upon him for mercy, and we trust that according to his word and will, the Lord will help all who look to him in faith. Christ's help may come in the form of strength to endure affliction, for our Lord may not remove suffering because in his will we must be shaped by it. But our Savior is still the great physician, and according to his will, he may choose to heal and give recovery. Now, Jesus not only healed those in need. In our Matthew text, we see that he also preached and taught. Verse 35, the gospel of the kingdom. While physical healing often dominates our attention because pain is difficult to ignore, far more essential to our existence is our soul's health and our eternal life of God. And the reason for this is obvious. This world is passing away. At best, our span of years on this earth is limited to only a handful of decades, if we can even last that long. After all, our mortal bodies have an expiration date. If Jesus' second coming does not occur first, we will die. So for us, the wise course is to do what Jesus said in Matthew 6:33: Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Over the course of pastor's 36-year ministry, he's learned that few Christians have a clear idea of what the kingdom of heaven or God really is. So in today's reading, when our Lord Jesus puts the message out there in verse 7, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, few today understand what he is talking about. And this is really surprising when you consider that in our church we pray the Lord's Prayer every Sunday. And we petition God this way in Matthew 6.10. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. As Christians, we want the Lord's kingdom to be present and active and controlling our world. So this raises a couple of questions. What is the kingdom of, of heaven? And two, for what are we asking when we pray for God's will here on earth? The narrow definition of the kingdom of heaven is the reign and rule of Christ in the hearts of believers. I'll say it again. The kingdom of heaven is the reign and rule of Christ in the hearts of believers. And we, when we pray, thy kingdom come, we are pleading for God to establish Christ's rule over our personal lives as well as over every facet and sector of our fallen world. In a real sense, we are asking for Jesus' second coming and our eternal life in heaven. But until that great and joy-filled day happens, in the Lord's Prayer, we are essentially asking that God's good and gracious will not only be done in heaven, but that we also want what God wants in our personal lives and in our church and throughout the entire world. In other words, we want sin and evil to stop. And we also pray that the things that please God would be willingly and joyfully done by all of humanity. For this to happen, we petition that God's power and grace would break and hinder everything that opposes his will, so that what our Lord wants would always be done among us. This means that we are praying for the Lord to frustrate and defeat the devil's work in this world. Further, we pray that our Lord would strongly oppose the world's rebellion and evil. And finally, we ask our Heavenly Father that he would give us his aid in the Holy Spirit to conform us to the image of Christ, as in Romans 8, so that even our own sinful nature yields to the Lord's will. When we pray, thy kingdom come, we are praying for God's rule and authority over everything. 
After all, since Jesus is our Savior, and since he paid for our sin on the cross, and is now our risen King, and finally, since he brings the kingdom himself, we want Christ in charge. So the reign and rule of Christ in the hearts of believers is the kingdom of heaven. The final thing that our gospel reading presents is that God uses his people to get the gospel of the kingdom out to the world. While Jesus walked on this earth, he himself preached and taught the good news of the kingdom. But the Lord also sent out his followers, the twelve disciples listed in our text. And today, Christ also sends us because the Savior knows that the harvest is plentiful while the laborers are few. So to get the message out, the disciples were sent with the message. Verse 7, the kingdom of heaven is in hand. The Greek in this verse is a little abstract. The verse can mean the kingdom of heaven is near, or the kingdom is in your midst, or the kingdom is inside you. Our Lord Jesus was reinforcing the truth that the kingdom brought by himself and resulting in life and salvation is eternal and springs from faith and a relationship with the living God. The kingdom is marked by righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And the kingdom is ours when we know by faith and love Jesus Christ. For Jesus brings the kingdom as he changes hearts one at a time. And then this brings us to today. Our world is still fallen and in rebellion to God. The world still needs the gospel of the kingdom in the same way it always has. We pray that God would send us out so that the world will find hope and life in Jesus Christ. Amen. We can continue with the Te Deum on page 223. We pray for God, we have to be the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord. 
we continue on page 227 with the Kyrie. Uh, then we'll go into the, the uh, prayers of the church and the Lord's Prayer. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Our final hymn for today is going to be hymn 733, O God, our help in ages past.
great to have you worship with us today. A special thanks goes out to our members of council who helped us with our worship service. And also, um, I wanted to uh, thank our video recording team who has been faithful with us for these uh, many weeks. As a uh, reminder, we will begin worship here in this church in one week. We will have a Saturday service and also the regular 8.30 a.m. service next Sunday. And please uh, be interacting with the KELC webpage for information regarding those services. God bless you in this Trinity season. And may God help you in your life and faith in Christ and as you grow in Him. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 